Okay. Today, the cats are out. That cat there is wrapped the proper way. So they can take it out at So they don't have to smell it. What I want to do with you all while you're watching me, is I want to kind of move all of you to, you're going to change your camera position, move all of you to that end of this room. Don't be beyond where she's sitting. So you can all see the model, okay? I'm going to use this one to go over the, the, what I want you to know on these models, okay? Is that too close? Maybe I have to pull it back. Yeah, a little bit. What are you looking at? look at over here. What are you looking at? <laughs> can I see yeah. These can become whatever sex you want them to be. <laughs> Some people have these home in their house. So we won't go beyond that. Okay. So, <coughs> so first of all, you've got to really figure out what do we mean by what's superficial, what's deep. So we're going to see there's a difference between a cat and a human when it comes to your pectoral. We have a pectoralis major, pectoralis minor. Well, we have two major big muscles in the chest. There's others in there, but two major big ones. The cat has four. The cat will have a, a pecto antibrachialis, a pec major. Then under his, you'll see here, a pec minor and a xiphi humoralis, meaning the xiphoid process to its humerus. So, like I told you, we name these things by where they run, what they're shaped like, or what they do, or what they hook to. And that's how they name them, okay? So, pec major is a superficial muscle. To see the minor, you'd have to take it off. So, in this case, you're seeing the minor, okay? So, that's what you're seeing here. This right here, sternocleidomastoid or SCF, you want to see this, you got to move up over there. Don't stand down there, you're not going to see what I'm going over, okay? Because I'm only doing this once, so I don't want to ask after, oh, can you do this? No. That's why we do it as a group, okay? So get over there, or your lab partners will have to show you, all right? So lab starts at a certain time, I expect is in here at a certain time. So sternocleidomastoid, or SCM as its abbreviation, okay? Pec major, pec minor. This is the external oblique coming down this way. The fibers run from a superior to inferior fashion. Okay. On this side is your six pack. It's a rectus muscle. Why? Because it has tendon insertions in itself. So it's the rectus abdominis, a rectus muscle put in the abdomen, rectus abdominis. Because we have another one in the leg, rectus femoris. Okay. Internal oblique fibers are running up this way. They're running a different plane. By doing that, by them crossing over this way, gives a lot of strength. This is your core. The transverse really doesn't play that much strength in the core. It's really the obliques that play the biggest role in keeping your core strong. Okay, so that's what I mean about a core. Okay, when you work your core, compared to abdominal hollowing, which only work the transverse muscle, core work works all four of them. So you really strengthen that core to stabilize a back, okay? This then is a serrated edge, like cut edges. This is your serratus anterior or ventralis, okay? So the models are pretty straightforward, and please use the PAL 3.0, because they're there. The SOMSO models are in there that we buy. They're the same models. And the cat dissections in there now are really good, and you can practical yourself on them. Some of it's beyond what you have, so you get those questions wrong, that's it. Now let's look at the back. So we turn to the back, and in the human, we're going to see the deltoid and the trapezius don't break into three names like the cat. In the human, you'd call it an upper, middle, lower, or an anterior, middle, posterior. You don't call it clavo, acromio, spinal. But if this was a cat, this would be clavo, this would be acromio, this would be spinal traps. Same thing with the deltoid. One in the front would be clavo, acromio, spinal. It's named by where it's either coming off of or where it's touching. Okay, so the insertion origin of the traps is from the nuchal all the way down the spinous process of the T12 and over. Okay, your, your lats, which you're seeing here, latissimus dorsi, comes from the lumbar up to about T6 is its origin, out into the medial anterior aspect of the humerus. So when it contracts, it does this to it. So here's your latissimus dorsi, here's your tri trapezius, here's your deltoid. So those are superficial. Now we go deep. Deep is the rhomboids. 
So we have a major and we have a minor. Okay, the major is the big thick one. Rhomboid shape, rhomboidal shape. Where's the rhomboid run? Very easy, between the medial border of scapula and your spine. That's what you look for. So if you have an idea of where it's supposed to be, you know where to look. Okay, that's the secret to learning this stuff. Where do they belong? Are they deep? Are they superficial? Once you get that in your head and you understand that, it makes it so much easier to put them together where they belong. In lecture, I do put them together for you. They're grouped into where they are. So hopefully, you know, we go over it and you listen to me when I do it. And it's on your PowerPoint. If you get download the PowerPoint, they're there. Okay, I took the time to write them all out for you in the groups how they would run. Okay, so it's done for you. Now it's up to you to take it from here and put it in here. So the next time you need to take it from here, you can put it there when you answer it. So we've removed this. The cat would have one more here. Called rhomboid cap that is running to the head. Okay? So we don't deal with that. And this would be your levator. You don't have to learn that one, okay? Because these are the splenus capitis, rectus capitis muscles that control the head. Those you don't learn either. Okay, so now we go here. So now we're going to talk about the rotator cuff guys. So here's the spine of scapula. So that's supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor. Teres major is not part of the cuff, but it's here. Every's major works with the lats to take the arm in this back position, to take it and extend it and internally rotate it. Because you go on each side, the lats is going to come in, the latissimus dorsi comes in. On one side, the pec major is going to come in and hook onto the lateral anterior aspect of the humerus, which means it's hooking here. All right? The rhomboid major is going to come and hook here. The lats is coming up and hooking between them. How do you remember that in your mind? The lady between two majors. The lady between two majors. What are the majors? Terry's major, Peck major. And it's a lady, lats, the lady between two majors. And so you keep that in your head. I learned that back in the, in the, in the spring of 78 when I was in cadaver anatomy. Never forgot it. it stays with you. So whenever you're in adult, oh, the lady between two maids, that's right, this one's here, this one's here. So you'll never forget your insertion, your insertion origin point. So that helps. Okay? So we're going to learn that the scapula sling muscles, meaning they're all hooking to the scapula to control the scapula. Then you're going to have muscles such as that are going to move the upper extremity. They're going to originate off scapula to do that. Then you're going to have muscles to move the forearm. They're going to originate above it to move the forearm. So just think, they have to be above the area they're going to move. So the origination point has to be there. You don't have to be specific on origination, on where they originate. Just know what bone they come off and what bone they go to. Then you know action. You know, why the deltoids can do this. Why the rotator cuff can do this. That's what you need to understand. If you understand that, then you don't have to memorize it because it makes sense to you. So you can take memory out of here if you understand how some of this functions. And that is known as functional anatomy. So if you understand the function of the thing, then it makes sense to be over here versus then, I don't know if it's here or here, you know? You understand what I'm trying to say to you? That's the point. Now the one you can't see here, we're gonna look at this guy to finish showing. Now this is our old model, that's why he's so old. Elastic together. That's the new one. This one's old. This one's been here as long as I can remember. So that's old. I've been here it'll be 20 years in the fall. That's brand new. Last year was the first year it came out. Those are 2,500 a piece. Wow. That guy's 5,000. This guy's 9,800. Because they wanted a new one like this, they wouldn't let me get that and get one of those. So problem with him or her, if they, you can make them whatever gender you want. He only shows you superficial muscles. He doesn't show you deep. This goes into this side, deep. So now we're going to get into the rotator cuff. So what we're going to do then, the first thing I have to get rid of to see it is what? i got to get rid of my deltoid because that's in the way. All right? And if you kind of visualize what this would be, well, that would be the traps cut away. Okay, so we cut it away. And this is your pet cut away. Okay, so then now you have an idea of where you are. So again, if we hold it in this plane so you can see the top, here's my spine of scapula. So that would be the supraspinatus. 
All the number twos are infraspinatus. Number four was Terry's minor, Terry's major, just like it was on there. Nothing different, look. Same thing. Then we go underneath now, and I see my subscapularis. And the interesting part of that, that's the only one that internally rotates it, because of where it's sitting. So the other three do this to it, this one does that. Or put it here, it does this, and those do that. This is the one that pitchers always mess up, the supraspinatus, because it's in this flex position and they throw this ball at 100 miles an hour and that muscle goes into a, from a full contracted state to a full extended state. It snaps itself, the back, three coils. That's how it tears itself. Also in here though, we can see, so if that's my pec major coming in, the whole thing is, there's my teres major. So that tendon right there has to be my latissimus dorsi. So you can figure that out if you kind of know what you're looking for. That's the point. Instead of just memorizing things like you love to do, figure it out. Because when you learn how to figure it out, you can't get tricked. You can't get anxiety saying, oh, I don't know that. You can't. It'll take your anxious. The more you have control of your knowledge of understanding this, the less anxiety you're gonna have for a test. You need some anxiousness, because that's gonna kick your adrenaline system in so you fo focus and function. I'm not saying that. But you can't come here and blank out. You need to fix that first, then go back to school if that's happening to you. You just can't do that. You gotta learn how to fix that. You gotta get control of that. And I guarantee if any of you go on to master's level on, You'll take so many tests that tests don't even blink your eye anymore. You just get, you, you get te test happy. So you just will focus, study, do like a machine, and you won't even get stressed out over it anymore. And that's how you make it to the point of your master's or your doctorate. You just learn how to take tests. There's a knot to that too. Okay? So that's all the human stuff you need to know. So make sure you take time to look at these models. On your own now, I've showed you what you need to see, so you have that. And the cats, what we'll do is we'll come around individually with each group and make sure you're seeing what you should see today, okay? So you're going to look at these same muscles now in the cat. And the reason we do it so you actually see what live tissue looks like, what it feels like, in comparison to seeing a piece of plastic. Okay, do I have the stomach to handle this stuff? So can I go forward into the careers I want to go to? Think if we always did everything virtual and plastic, you finally see a real patient all cut up in front of you, you probably, boom, over you'd go. So this slowly gets you ready for it, okay? All right, let's get to work then. Thank you. It is. It's mean like that. No, that means you really know it. I don't like that. That's true. <laughs> Whatever. All right, so let's we'll start with your chest. So when you start with a chest, okay, always count backwards. One, two, three, four. Why do I say that to you? Because 90% of you are going to call that pectointegregialis, and it's not. What is it? Deltoid something. Yeah. Oh, clavo -delta. Clavo -delta. something loses a point in the practice. <laughs> All right? So, clavo so this would be the pecto antibrachialis. It's going to the antibrachium. This is your pec major, my pec minor, and here's the xiphi humoralis right here. Okay? See it? Good. So what's this one up here? Sternohyoid. Sternohyoid. This one underneath here, which you don't even know, is sternum thyroid. It's going to the thyroid gland. See how it's named? I'm trying to make you think of names. So think of sternum to the hyoid bone. Sternohyoid. That's stabilizing it this way. So when these are pulling this way, muscles above it are pulling against it and holds itself tight. So now you can pull your jaw open or retract your tongue back in your mouth or stabilize it, the top of it. Now the epiglottis will pull, the glottis pulls up to the epiglottis. That's why it's there. So the bone stabilizes and locks my muscle and the other intricate muscles around it create the movement you want to move. Right? Don't put it in there, it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> this is the rectus abdominis. For those okay, who care. I remember that. This is the external oblique. It looks like a piece of ham. Mm -hmm. 
So next time you pick up a piece of ham, just say, get mayo and cheese. Right. <laughs> this is the Serenus ventralis or anterior. And even here, you can now. What would this be? That's under the scapula. Um, the uh, like a submarine sub. That's not your sub. Oh, scapula. Oh, yes, oh, Why think wouldn't it be? From the other way. Why can't you? I'm asking you. I'm is, it, is it only on? Oh, I thought you could only see You can see back. it both ways. Oh, okay. Okay. So subscapular. Uh, you got it? Subscapular. What's that? Yeah. Oh, you're probably lying this way. On the That's the clavel. That's the clavel. That's the clavel. That's the clavel. Oh, okay. It's tough. 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 Turn over. It's very open. It's a baby anyway. Ours is that one. Good yeah, ours, is, ours is terrible. It's ours ugly and beat up. You can't see anything. Because you already abused it. You. Had a die job. So here's the... What? Had a die job. Yeah. Here's the... So what's the big wing wing? Latissimus dorsi. A noise in here. So here's all your traps. All this. All the way up to the head. So this is spinal traps. This right here. Chromio traps. Come up under here. <laughs> Clavel traps. <laughs> now, where the traps end, what muscles should originate to go on? The deltoid. So, clavo deltoid, chromio deltoid, spino deltoid. Because this is levator scapula ventralis. For those who want to know. No, don't tell us anything we don't need to know, please. Levator scapula ventralis, so it's going ventral. Pulls the scapula up, see? So now these were deep. So we took the superficial muscle. All your traps is retracted back. Some of your lats, so we can see the muscles of rotated cuff. Okay. So right here is the spine of the scapula. So this is my supraspinatus. This is the infraspinatus, and this is the teres major right here. See? See? No? You don't see it on the cat. Okay. You can, but it's not worth the dissecting. Subscapularis. And you can see from both views, okay? So now here's my rhomboid. So remember, the rhomboids lie between the medial border of the scapula and the spine. Here's the major, here's the minor, here's the capitis. Major, minor, capitis. Katie doesn't have any of that stuff. Because it's broke on yours, I know. I saw it yesterday, I was ripping when I saw it. After dissecting this stuff out. Two or three, three cats are just mutilated. Yeah. It's one and we that, did. Isn't that sad? Because they weren't. They all looked like this at one time. Because people roll, what they do is they 